Hey everyone, I'm a small lizard, and we will continue our PNC adventures looking at a very important, or rather two important identities, intersection and union. Now what are intersection and union? Let's start off with intersection. And I believe you guys really have some sort of idea, right? Let's say for example in graphs where we have two curves and we realize this is the intersection point. And it's actually the same idea in probability. The only difference is instead of seeing two graphs, we're looking at two events or more happening at the same time, right? So for example, we have event A and event B. Let's say event A is, let's say it rains. Event B is going out. Of course, then the intersection would be, let's say A intersect B means that both are happening. So A intersect B equals to it rains and someone goes out. Right? Let's say John finally gets out of his house. For some reason, he likes to go on a rainy day. All right? Now, on the other hand, when we talk about union, the idea of collaboration would probably occur in your mind. But in the sense, in the word probability, A union B essentially means a or B happening, right? So together we have A, probability of A happening or probability of B happening, right? So P, A or B happening. Now the trick is this, all right? If let's say we were to represent it as a Venn diagram, all right? So this is what we call by a Venn diagram or rather a sketch of it, all right? Let's say this is the probability of A happening. This is the probability of B happening. So events A and B. You notice that, hey, all right? For let's say there is an intersection where both events can occur at the same time. You notice that they intersect at this green or rather let's say this red part down here. So this is the part where we have P A intersect B, where both events A and B occur. Now you realize that for union, it's the whole thing. But you notice that because there is this intersection in the center, it is not simply as P A plus P B. If you notice, if we have P A plus P B, you notice that we have this outside portion, let's say we name this outside portion C, we name this outside portion D, we notice that if we have PA, it is essentially C plus the red portion, and then PB is D plus the red portion. So let's say we name the red portion R. And we double counter the red portion for union. As a result, what we need to do, and we have actually this identity where if we have PA, union B, essentially A or B, then it is equals to P A individually, the probability of B happening individually, minus away the intersection of both of them, because each of them would include P A intersect B individually, that means we double counter the intersection, we need to get rid of one of them, all right? So of course, if let's say there is no intersection, then this would be zero, then it's literally PA plus PB. All right, so let's say it's event A is raining, event B is not raining, then you know that PA plus PB for either A or B to occur is simply PA plus PB. But in this case, where if let's say we have event A being raining, event B being John going out, then of course, if it's A intersect B or A or B, then you notice that B, John can go out whether it's raining or not and A is whether it's raining or not, but of course there's an intersection, all right? Because John can go out when it's raining, John can go out when it's not raining as well. All right, so that is the whole idea or a very simple visual representation on the intersection and union. And we have this identity right here that is derivable just by simply sketching the Venn diagram right here. All right, so let's see this in action with this particular example. Find the number of ways of arranging five girls and three boys in a row if either a boy is first or a girl is last. Now, you notice that we want either a boy is first or a girl is last. So we have, let's say, event A, or let's pretty simply event B and event G. And you notice that since you want either or the other, that the concept of union will come up, right? So what we can do 
is let b be, or rather, actually, we don't have to really think about it that way. All right, because we're not looking at probability, we're looking at number of ways, so we can skip that. Or both. Okay, so we want either a boy is first or a girl is last. So we can use the idea of union and intersection. All right, where we're going to find the number of cases of boy being first, and then number of cases of girl being last. And of course, when we were to include both of these cases, when we add them together, we notice that we've added both cases happening at the same time together, right? Because number of cases of boy includes B and G happening. Number of cases of G will also include B and G happening. So we need to only consider one only, which means we have to take out the number of cases of B and G. All right, so graphically, or rather for another visual representation, this is B happening, this is G happening, this is B intersect G. We notice that if to calculate B, calculate G, we have added this portion twice, and we need to take it out once. All right, so let's get on with it. So we have number of cases of B equals two. So first of all, what we can do is, since you want to find the number of ways that boy is first, so we can find the number of ways that the boy is actually first. So we have five possible ways of getting the boy to be first, right? Since, oh sorry, there's three possible ways because there's only three boys. So we have three times. Now the remaining is very simple, seven factorial. All right, because we just want to find the number of ways a boy can be first without caring whether a girl is last or not. Now, same thing, we want to find number of cases where the girl is last. So how many ways can a girl be last? There are five different girls that can be last. So we have five. Then we times seven factorial. Add them together is eight times seven factorial or eight factorial. Number of cases where now we have a boy is first and a girl is last. So a boy that can be first is three. A girl can be last, that is five. Now we are left with six people only. So six factorial. So now we add everything together and then minusing off the number of cases of boy, both B and G happening. So we just simply do this. All right, so this is 15 times 6 factorial. Let me pull out my calculator. So we have 8 factorial minus 15 times 6 factorial. This would then give us 29520 cases. All right, so this is a very, very simple example of the idea of using union and intersection, where we need to take note, when we want to add cases, we need to be careful of minusing of or subtracting the case where both events are happening because of this idea right here. All right, so there we have it, the example of intersection along with union.